This is the Blood Red podcast from the Liverpool Echo, giving you the inside track on all the big talking points from Anfield. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the Blood Red podcast. Uh, I'm joined by the last Hungarian to, to play for Liverpool, Adam Bogdan. Nice to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us, Adam. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, you were the last Hungarian to play for Liverpool. But before that, you also played uh, quite a few games at Anfield. Uh, the, the big game that stands out is obviously your performance for Bolton in, in the FA Cup. Uh, I wanted to ask you, what was it like to play at Anfield as an opposition player? Uh, how much impression did it leave on you? You know, I think many, many people have said it before me, but uh, I can only uh, repeat it them or myself as well. It's a fantastic stadium. You know, the atmosphere is truly, truly unique uh, in England and, and in Europe as well, I think. Um, you know, everything that people or, or myself love about English football is is there. You know, the, the, the stands are very close. Um, they're very loud. Uh, it's very tight pitch. And um, you know, you know, the never walk alone song. It's it's it gets people going. You know, so for me, it was a privilege to play there um, as an opposition as well. And uh, you know, I tried to do my best. Um, it was, it, it's a memory that's going to live with me forever, for sure. Hmm. That, does it make you nervous? Does it put you off as a goalkeeper sometimes, with especially playing, uh, you know, as an opposition goalkeeper in, in front of the cop? It didn't, you know. That time when I played against uh, Liverpool was I was I was fine to be honest. You know, uh, I really enjoyed it. I was focused, and um, to be honest, the game went really well for me. So it was, I was not nervous. It just I felt I felt really good. But I can imagine, you know, it's 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 not just a stadium, but you know, it, the, the the way that Liverpool plays for the last couple of years, it it can put you under pressure. Um, the opposite goalkeepers or the opposite players, because we've seen, you know, wonders uh, in the last couple of years in the Champions League or Europa League, uh, where you know the first leg didn't go as planned, and the second leg, you know, uh, the team turned it around, and and but with the help of the fans, of course, but also the style of play just doesn't give you any time to rest or 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 think on the pitch. Mm-hmm. And so, so you played at Anfield. Uh... But then very quickly, I think it was very soon after mm-hmm. winning at Anfield that, that you found out that, that Liverpool wanted to sign you. Do you remember your first reaction? Uh, and, and what was it, if you do remember? Yeah, I mean, you know, my contract was finished uh, with Bolton in 2015. And um, we were driving back home to Hungary the first time, you know, we were always flying. And uh, I think we got to Austria, and, and that's when my agent called me that there's a strong interest and there's a possibility that I'm going to sign. Uh, and of course, you got you get very excited, you you get very uh, proud, and um, I couldn't I couldn't wait to get it started, to be honest. Hmm. And obviously, it comes with the fact that you were only the second Hungarian to ever play for 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 Liverpool. So, how proud of you of that fact to to do? You know, to have made it from such a small country to, to play for Liverpool and become only the second ever to do it. Yeah, I never really thought about it, to be honest. I, I felt that, that for, for, for people who love football and love football in Hungary, they, it was a massive deal. Uh, for me, it was a massive deal because of, of, of my profession and because it was a huge step for me. Um, and and to, to, to represent such a big, big team and such a unique team, um but i never really thought about it that i'm only because that wouldn't you know it wouldn't get me anywhere really um and plus it wasn't easy uh to before the before we joined the eu to get out you know get in uh in england uh which which is i think the case now as well it's not that easy anymore um but um but yeah, I mean, you know, we had I had Peter Gulac, you know, who I played together uh, with in the national team, and also before, he was he was part of the the, the team also, Christian Nemeth, yeah. uh, and but probably Peter was was there for a long, long time. He was very, very unlucky not to be able to make a first team appearance because I think he has like I, I can't I don't I don't remember the numbers, but but I think it's around fifty uh, fifty games or, or involved, you know, so. Um, so I, I knew I knew about Liverpool and I knew about the club um, 
through them. So it wasn't like, and also I played there. So it's it's a big deal. Of course, it is a big deal, but it didn't feel like I'm coming to a club which which is totally um, unknown for me or through my friends or through through my my playing career as well. Mm. And obviously, after you arrived very quickly, Jurgen Klopp came in. Do you remember what was your first impression of him arriving at Liverpool? What was he like when when he first joined? Mm, yeah, he was he was very intense. You know, it was the first couple of. Uh, uh, also, I have always said this, but I'm I'm very I'm very lucky to 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 be able one of the few people in the world to see see him working and see the whole transition that the club club went through at that time um because he was intense you know he tried to get his mess he has he has an absolutely clear clear idea as you know since then it's proved um but but for me and for everybody in the first from the first day it was pretty clear that he he knows exactly what he wants to get out he knows exactly what is that top top level football uh that is required uh to win in europe or or to win the league and uh and and he straight away got you know got working and we had a lot of videos uh sorry video meetings we had a lot of um uh training hours on the pitch off the pitch change the kitchen change change everything really the, uh, and improve uh step by step in order to to be able for the team to be able to compete uh in the highest highest level you know and it took him a couple of um couple of years to to win the title and and to win the um to win the champions league as well but uh i think all the way on the on the way on the road there was always a, a signs of progression for sure you know just to reach the Europa league final the first year um um the uh i was always gonna say carling cup fine final but it's not carling cup is it anymore <laughs> uh the league cups or the league cup um uh final and then the second year you know you get to to the champions league qualification so so it's always um improvements uh in the squad and in in the results as well and ultimately you know you know resulted that 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 liverpool was champion of europe again and and the champion of england again um but it was it was pretty pretty clear from the beginning that 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 he knows exactly where he wants to be and how he wants to get there um you mentioned he made some changes to the kitchen and stuff. What what kind of changes did he make in in terms of the training session and preparation for games? Do you remember? Everything was just 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 very uh, efficient and very, you know, um, it's almost like you know, like like German, you know, like like car, you know, like it's just working, you know, and 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 everything was was logical, everything. You know, was was there to for people to perform, and um, and also you had to adapt it as well because he changed the timing as well. Of course, the uh, it was usually you train in the morning and your afternoon is free. With him, it was all over the place. Sometimes you train in the afternoon, sometimes you train in the morning, depending on the game. So everything was was like a backward thinking. You know, not, not backward thinking, but you you go backwards. From the from the game, and if the game is at night, you're going to train at night the two days before. Um, and then you know, changing like he, I think he just put uh, people in 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 the right position, the right people with a lot of quality, and and that goes to the gym, people in the gym, people in the um, like I said, in the kitchen, um, everything, every, and it was wasn't you know like straight away. It was always step by step. But um, but yeah, so that's what I mean. Like he 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 knows he knew exactly uh, what is the level um, that has to be reached on the training pitch and 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 on the on on the on the on the stadium on the on the field as well. Uh, obviously, we have to address the elephant in the room. We are talking after Dominic Sobosai completed his transfer to Liverpool. Uh, he's the next Hungarian after you to, to join the club. What was your reaction uh, when you first heard about the news? Yeah, just proud. You know, um, I was I was actually woke up at like three o'clock at night uh, that night, and I started to think, you know, how it was with me, and and the fact that he's going there, and a lot of memories came back to me. But um, 
to be i have to say that he's he's the biggest talent uh that hungary has had in the last last couple of years for sure but maybe maybe overall um as well and and it was pretty clear from the um since he was like 17 and there was a european championship uh qualification in hungary he was played in hungary and, and he had amazing free kicks you know and he decided games uh last minute to go for that for that team to go or to progress and uh, from that moment it was pretty clear that he's super talent and then he's i think he's managed really well as well because he went to uh red bull Salzburg first and i think it's a very ideal place for for talents to be the league itself is not the 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 hardest so it gives you time to to improve on physical um elements of the game you can work on your tactics um at the same time ideally you you're playing in the champions league because that team is capable of getting into the champions league or worse europa league and uh with the fact that that leipzig you know promoted to the bundesliga and and they're getting stronger and stronger uh that was a natural next step for many players who were at salzburg and and he did that stuff as well i think he was because that time he had offers as well uh there's a lot of news about him could could be going to italy or or somewhere else uh i'm not sure if it was true or not but eventually he, he made the choice to go to leipzig and that was a another uh very good big step but in a but it's a very well thought through step and uh and then he started to get stronger he started to to be more important in the team uh over the years a couple of years and then he got the captain of of the national team um so it is another other big responsibility on his on his uh, shoulders but at the same time he worked amazingly crazy hard uh because he had some injury you know before the europa league um uh, european championship which was played two games was played in budapest so he's huge and he missed it and i think i think that made him work even harder uh on his body to be able to cope with 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 the level that the bundesliga is uh, required you from and uh and i think the next step is something like this because because that um red bull leipzig or, or salzburg you could see that players they either go to another step from salzburg or um which which normally is the case with like haaland goes to dortmund uh i, I remember money went to southampton i think first and then to come to liverpool uh Nabi Keita came straight from Leipzig I guess yeah. that was Leipzig yeah but maybe he was before in Salzburg I'm not sure but but yes he was in, in Salzburg before yes. yeah so there's a very um uh, well paved route do you say yeah. that yeah. yeah so it's um it's like and I think a lot of big European clubs trust this kind of setup because they can see it's working and 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 therefore it's it's a lot of money what they paid which is unbelievable for a Hungarian players we've never been this place before but um or in this situation but uh given the his history and his his pedigree and his talent and the way and 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 the, the fact that he played in two big games you know big teams now is they can say with a lot of certainty that this will work out and for him personally you know he's coming from like the German um way of playing football the way of thinking the way of uh, doing everything right he has a german uh coach um the, the signs are good you know the, the there's a lot of lot of most of the things that are there that has to be there to, for him to be successful are there you mentioned that the german coach and, and the german way of thinking obviously we've spoken about how klopp had very specific methods in terms of training uh do you think he is ready to to play in the liverpool system and in, in the gagan pressing style absolutely i think i think the uh the salzburg have just you know uh i, I was playing for ferenc varos now in hungary and yeah. uh, they just had a, a pre-season friendly against i salzburg. watched i saw yeah and i only saw the first five minutes because there was a, a goal uh mm. that salzburg well, it was an own goal from our side but 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 they had that Ferenc Harris tried to get out four or five times in the in the first five minutes they couldn't get out once you know for building up from the back so I think I think he he, he understand 
Soboslai mm-hmm. understands perfectly the Goigan passing. He understands perfectly how to play in in uh, those formations. Um, he he has a good coach at the national team as well. That he's really gone in tactics. He has he had unbelievable good coaches uh, in his Leipzig time with Nagelsmann. Uh, and before uh, another guy who is the guy at the moment, I think at Leipzig. Um, so they are the top coaches, um, and he knows exactly. He know he knows the tactics. He know he knows what to do. The only thing he needs to uh, get used to, I think, it's which is it's pretty clear that anybody who comes to the Premier League, that usually the tempo of the games is higher, and the physicality of the games um, are a bit higher than the Bundesliga uh doesn't mean that technically they are better you know uh so uh, but but generally speaking the 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 premier league is 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 a little bit more demanding i would say and the mm-hmm. fact that it's not meant not not a big break you know in the in the winter uh loads of games you're playing in europa league this year so that's a lot of tra- uh, late traveling as well uh, not on the tuesday and not on a wednesday but on the thursday um so there will be a lot of games for him to play for sure, but but I guess maybe I hope not. And he's going to be like somebody like uh, Erling Haaland that he comes through the door and then kicks it in, um, um, and then he starts performing straight away. But at the same time, there is also a possibility that he needs a little bit of time to adopt. But he has a big ego in a very good sense, and he has a very big uh, self belief as well. Um, so he's all, he, it's, it's a natural step for him. And then he, he's born to be part of a, a huge, huge club. Hmm. And obviously you speak with some sort of, some knowledge because you spent some training camps with, camps with him in the national team. Uh, what was he like when you were part of, of the squad together? Well, he was, um, you know, since he became the captain of the team, I don't know how he is, uh, but yeah. uh, at that time it was Adam Salai who was the uh, who was the captain. So, you know, he had uh, he he. You could see that. Okay, this is the talent and and the way he kicks the ball and the way he kicks the free kicks is is it's incredible. You know, he gets I don't I don't know ten out of eight he would get on target and then then he would score maybe half of it. It's it's crazy from distance. He's he's, he's incredible um but but he works really hard and uh and that time when when adam was there you know he wasn't the vocal leader i would say but i think that would that must have changed since since i'm not in the national team because he's the captain so he he works hard he's professional uh he's got a huge talent he understands the game um yeah that's good he's a very good player but uh, listen, I don't need to tell that because because the the price tag, you know, I'm sure that there's a much, you know, anybody who pays that kind of money, uh, it's a very well thought uh, business, and uh, they're just not gonna throw out on anybody. You know, it's they they must have monitored him for a long time. They know him, they they know his qualities. They probably know his weaknesses as well. They know what they have to work on. It's uh, I think it, it will work. I, I'm really hoping for him f- to work out. Uh, but we from Hungary, we are very, very proud and very happy. You know that that we have a player in this magnitude, and he's playing in in the Premier League and he's playing for Liverpool. That's that's huge. Obviously, as a goalkeeper, you must have faced a, a lot of his shots. Uh, you mentioned how good it is. How difficult was it to stop? How difficult was it to read him where where he's gonna go and uh, where he's gonna put the ball? Ah, listen, it's, it's top. It, it really is a top, top, top player, and I would have said the same a year ago. If even if he, he, you know, then he wasn't linked with Liverpool, that his shots, his free kick shots, or any shots, it just takes your hands in. You know, like, you know, the way it, it, it sort of um, lands on your. Even if you can get a touch, it's it's hard because it's sort of like just. I don't know what's the right word, but it it it, it sort of reaches the the fastest point when it comes down from above and then he mm-hmm. really hard to put any force behind it because that's when the the, the ball is the uh, the fastest and the strongest and um i think you can see that some of the free kicks he's, he scored that you know some sometimes keepers get a touch but it just takes his hand in 
and it was the same in the training even if you could can get close to it the the, the, the sheer power that uh he can he can strike it and it's sort of like a whip he he whips it um it makes it really really hard to 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 save it you know there's a dip on it there's a whip there's um you will see if if, if you go to the stadium and you will see his uh, diagonal balls you can see the the sound of the ball uh, you can sorry you can hear the sound of the ball you can see the way he, he kicks it it's uh, it's a pleasure to watch I spoke to his dad a few years ago and he told me he practiced something like 100 to 200 free kicks a day uh, in the national team. Was he someone who would practice a lot as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they do. Uh, all big players, they practice. You know, it's not by, of course, there's talent, but there's not by coincidence then that the talents just, just go through that in this level or even even not at this level you have to practice you have to be on top you have to be you have to because imagine the the pressure you're under when it when it comes to like last minute and you have to have a, you have a free kick uh long time ago it was the case with david Beckham. remember and he, everybody mm-hmm. talked about it like he practiced like i don't know one hour after each session and when he when the big moment comes then it comes natural for mm-hmm. them imagine that you, that's the only free kick you sco- you shoot during the during the week it's not ideal is it, it has yeah. to be the, the i don't know the hundredest um of that week so it becomes like a natural thing and what was he like off the pitch uh, in, in in the training camp how how did he behave with his teammates was he a shy guy or was he a big personality i think he's got a big personality in him like i said when, when i was there we had another captain that had also a big personality hmm. so uh you know maybe his his uh, and he was only like 20 19 or 20 so um but i i i believe that that he has a big personality he has a huge talent and usually the um the two together is a good it's a good sign um i think your answer is pretty obvious but i'm gonna ask you anyway do you think he will succeed at liverpool i think the signs are really good like I said before, that all the all the all the things that I mentioned, the uh, the uh, the price tag is good, the uh, the fact that he has a German uh, uh, stuff behind him, he understands the the German way of playing football. He understands the demands. He he's born to be a star. Um, he has a huge talent. He works really hard. Uh, don't know if you can get more. Um, good better signs than this to be honest so let's let's keep our fingers crossed that 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 he succeed um but maybe he will only succeed you know uh at the end of the season or in january or in from september ideally he would start sh- shooting and scoring you know from from the first minute but there's not a big disaster if he if he if if it needs a little bit of time to adopt um because I don't want to. Okay, it's not a podcast to 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 come to bring up Man City, but mm. I will do it anyway. That let's say like Grealish didn't mm. start uh, at the beginning. How everybody uh, imagined he would, and at the end he has a treble winning season um, a little bit later. So it, it's 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 a combination of 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 improvement, combination of a little bit of patience. And, and the talent will come through for sure. Mm. And finally, Adam, you spent a, a lot of time at Ferenc Varos now, um, leaving the club now after very successful years being in the Champions League and the Europe League. What does the future hold for you? Where next? Uh, you still looking to to play? And uh, uh, where, where could we see you? Where could yeah, that's a, that's a good question because I'm 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 still I'm still looking to play, uh, but I'm not. Uh, I'm quite picky. And, and also i'm gonna be 36 you know in uh in september so that's that being picky and, and being 36 and it's not maybe not the, the the best combination in order to to take any offer um but so it, it, it's a bit open at the moment I'm, I'm keeping myself fit and then the the first idea is to, to still play football and uh, i'm looking to be still playing football but uh, if, if that does doesn't happen that I have other plans as well, which is which makes me very exciting. But well, I don't know how people see me exciting, but makes me very excited as well. 
that's good to hear i wish you all the best and, and thanks again for joining us as well thank you guys see you later you've been listening to the blood red podcast from the liverpool echo